Thank you for the research to start with, Peter. Thank you. Uh, I'm so fired up. I, I love it when I can come to events and, and see really substantive work. And of course, we're in a room of the converted today. I'm looking around uh, at a room of people who have a gender lens. So I think that's something we've really got to be mindful of uh, as well. But um, this is really exciting for adding uh, a lot of momentum and energy into a very important topic. Within the housing context, just to give you a sense of the, uh, the, the challenge we face in the city of Melbourne, currently as we look across the population of people experiencing homelessness, it's still about 56% men and 44% women. But when we look at the growth uh, in homelessness, 80% of that growth is in is women experiencing homelessness. So we're going to see those numbers change very, very quickly. Uh, one of the things that is uh, really encouraging and I think uh, a leadership role that philanthropy, philanthropy plays uh, is that uh, philanthropic leaders really go to where the need is. And we are seeing that. And thank you to all the uh, leaders here from philanthropy, Catherine Brown, who I've spent years working with at Lord Mayor's Charitable Foundation, uh, has taught me a lot about this. Thank you, Catherine. But philanthropy um, beyond government, thank goodness, interesting stat, is uh, really going to the need. We've recently... Uh, started, when I say recent, I mean uh, years, uh, uh, working on a project in the city called Make Room, uh, which is about uh, housing solutions for people that are rough sleeping, particularly uh, focused there, people that are at their most vulnerable. And uh, in dealing with our philanthropic supporters that are literally a kaleidoscope of organisations, uh, that intention and leadership came through from the start. We need to make sure that this is a facility that can show priority for women and particular needs within the uh, cohort of women. And so uh, amongst many other measures, we have a floor dedicated to women, uh, particularly those in extreme circumstances so that they can receive special care and protection uh, in the facility. So I really want to acknowledge the role that philanthropy already played uh, in, in uh, really demanding and expecting that um, from their investment. Uh, but the growth in women experiencing homelessness uh, and is one side. The other side that we've already touched on is uh, what happens when we invest in women and the, uh, the exponential benefits that happen across our community and our city uh, when we do that. It is still shocking uh, to realise that, uh, as Julie said at the start, we are now more than 50% of the population and yet we are the biggest group of disadvantaged people within uh, population, women, because we are still so discriminated against in, in many, many ways, and yet we are more than 50% of the population. How did we let this happen? Uh, we need to see change, and that's one of the reasons I'm so excited about the report as well, identifying these pathways for others to put on a gender lens. I uh, accept that sometimes women can be blind to these things as well, but on the whole, being able to bring the entire population uh, on this discussion because we do need to see pace uh, and uh, there are so many uh, reasons why we're not seeing pace, but I'm going to put it out there that really one of the biggest barriers is that we're not willing to have what are often uncomfortable, uh, uh, sometimes uh, conflict-based uh, and usually ferocious discussions to actually challenge the status quo uh, with the people who established the status quo and are very comfortable in the status quo. And uh, I believe that this research is going to help us by forming the right sorts of alliances uh, and measuring and giving guidance on how we can work better together to actually create the environments where we can really have those, uh, I call them challenge to improve conversations to try and take some of the the conflict and the fear out of it, but how do we have more of those challenge to improve conversations so that we can really push the pace of change? 
uh, on uh, International Women's Day this year, the stat came out that at the current pace of change of women in leadership positions across a multitude of organisations and sectors, to get to equality will take another 130 years. That's not acceptable. And so the pace at scale at which we change is important. Uh, and for us, uh, even using that housing context, there will be more women assisted uh, in uh, the facility that we're building, Make Room, it opens in August. But we know that in doing that, we're having more of the right sorts of conversations about, about why that's important and really uh, creating more of that exponential impact across the community.